announcements we have for today. I'll be presiding over the worship and I'll also be taking the reading which will come from Titus chapter 2 and Bill will be leading our thoughts around the Lord's table today. Next week, Mike, Michael will be presiding over the worship and Mark will take the reading from Titus 3. The Lord's table will be taken charge by Nick and I will be taking the preaching. Cleaning rotor for next on the rotor for next week for cleaning is Michael. And let's also not forget to use the wipes to wipe off our hymn books and the chairs after the close of worship. We have come to the presence of God to worship Him this morning. Let us try to focus our attention on the reason why we are here, which is to worship God. And if you are here to do so, kindly put off your phones or put them on vibrations so that they don't disturb us during the course of our worship. Our first song this morning is going to be hymn number 111. Sorry, 100. <laughs> Come, let us all unite to sing that God is Lord. Come, let us all you know. to Sorry, I wrote one 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 first and then I changed it. One zero zero. Come thou almighty king. Come thou almighty king. Help us I need to sing. Help us to Speak 
Some 
chapter 2 from verse 1 to the end. <coughs> but as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrines. Older men are to be sober minded, dignified, self controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be relevant in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, Urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respect to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may not put to shame. So that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn, they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passion, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of, of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Declare these things, exalt and rebuke with all authority, and let no one disregard you. May God add more blessings to you in Jesus' name. Before Bill will lead our thoughts around the Lord's table, we will sing hymn number 655. There's a fountain free. There's a fountain free, it is for you and me. Let us taste no ways to be free. the fount of life from the source above, then it bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? It's for you and me and this flame I 
see, let us listen joyfully there. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me. This is so. As many of you all know, I've got a grandson who's six weeks old, and yet he's seen three prime ministers, and he's seen a king who plays a queen. So let's hope there's not too much change in the future. Uh, yes, we live in a world of change. We even changed the clocks back uh, today. Uh, so we had an extra hour, in theory. I'm sure we would uh, like to go back in time and make different choices for ourselves on occasion. And we can't change the past, but we can't change the choices we make for the future. Thankfully, God doesn't change. You know, unlike politicians and other people, he keeps his promises. And he, he said he'll never leave us or forsake us. We can trust him more than anyone even ourselves. He of course wants us to change, to be like Jesus. We fail a lot, thankfully he offers us forgiveness if we truly repent. The Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, is willing to sacrifice his life for his faith. And, but he recognised that he was the worst of sinners. And he was very grateful for God's amazing grace and the promise of eternal life. And those are things that we need to keep in our heads, you know. We often think we're not good enough or, um, you know, we have to do something else perhaps to, to get right with God. But God loves us and he wants us to, to give our hearts and our minds to him and to his purpose and not be distracted by the world. The, there's so much goes on in the world there, trying to give you that information about the wars and about politics and all the other stuff, the nonsense that comes through. But you know, we're told to fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the one that's answer to everyone's problems, answer to the world's problems, if only the, the world knows it, uh, was to know it. But of course, hopefully we all know that. And we appreciate all the more the, the great sacrifice of Jesus and what he has done for us. And of course, Jesus set his heart and his mind on going to the cross. You know, remember Peter tried to stop him. Other people, politics tried to get in the way uh, of politics of the time to stop Jesus uh, going to the cross. But ironically, they, God used the, the wickedness and corruption of men, even religious men, uh, to put Jesus on the cross for us and for all of mankind. Uh, even before Jesus asked the Father if there was any other way, but uh, the answer was no. He knew they had to go to the cross. He didn't desire to feel the pain and the suffering. He didn't desire to go through uh, the humiliation that there was there. But out of love for everyone, he did it. He said, there's, there's no other way your will be done. If only we, we had that attitude to, to God continuously, but that's why we're here. That's why we need to break bread and to remember Jesus' sacrifice because we're sinners. And of course, the Father didn't change his mind because he chose it in that way uh, before the creation of the world. He knew that somewhere along the line, man would choose to reject him and to sin. And this shows the Father's seriousness and his attitude to sin. That also shows his great love for us, that he was willing to sacrifice his own son. Ask Brother Ian to give thanks for the bread. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the great sacrifice that Jesus gave on our behalf. 
And as we partake of this bread, we realize that uh, without his love, without his mercy and example to us, we could not be sitting here today. We could not be your children. We could not have hope and we would be lost. And for us, this is a very simple moment to partake of this bread, to remind us of that sacrifice. And yet for Jesus, it was not a simple moment. It was a moment of hardship, extreme pain, and a struggle within himself as he spoke to you that night and asked if there was another way. And yet he was willing to take upon himself the sins of the world and the burden that that carried with it. Prepare us for the week that lies ahead as we meet obstacles, as we find opportunities to talk to people about Jesus and his love and, and just help us to, to be uh, a light to them as we know what the love of Christ has meant to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother Mike to give thanks for the plan. Our Father in heaven, we, we thank you that you gave us Jesus, your Son. Only through him, Father, we know that we are indeed redeemed by his blood, for there is no other way by which we might be forgiven. And we must not depend on any other thing or ourselves, but rather to uh, put aside our own will and to do your will, Father, we know that there's not, nothing we can do to save ourselves. We have to completely depend on you. And we thank you for that, Father, because you're all wise and all powerful, and that you have given us a wonderful gift, Father, that is indestructible, and that we, through faith, can access your very presence, Father. And thank you for that wonderful invitation, and as we, as we Take this cup together, Father. Help us to always remember the love that you show us in that cup. Because we know that the blood of Jesus forgives us of all of our sins. Help us, Father, to always lean on him. And we thank you that you bless us as your children. In the name of Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The next song we'll sing is hymn number 132, Does Jesus Care? This song was written by Frank E. in 1901. It's a song that was written because he had gone, so many, gone through so many problems in life. And then he turned his attention to 1 Peter 5, verse 7, which says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. As Christians, we all go through different challenges in life. Our health situations, problems at our workplaces, 
family issues and all that. Sometimes they may become so strenuous on us that we might not even be able to handle them alone. Sometimes we seek help to guide us through these problems. Sometimes we may turn to friends, but in reality, the only one we can turn to for help is to Christ our Lord Jesus. Because He cares for us, and this song gives us a clear explanation of that. Ask His questions first, and then gives us a, a solution that yes, He cares for us. His heart is touched with our griefs. When the days are weary, and the long nights dreary, our Savior cares. I hope it's a long song. Is it long? You're on your own. I thought it was no more. <laughs> Does Jesus care when my heart is pain to deeply for me? seems like there is no one that cares 
that Jesus knows and he cares. And that the name of Jesus is all that we need to call upon whenever we are in trouble. If you can, let's stand together as we sing. You take the name of Jesus with you. Hymn number 611. And after the song, our brother Mark will direct our minds to God in prayer. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh my sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name. Thank you. 